On today's video, we're gonna discuss my experience as a freelance videographer. And we're gonna find out once and for all, did money rain down from the sky when I did freelance videography? One of the main things I'm gonna point out in this video is one of the biggest issues with doing freelance video stuff is that there's an extremely low barrier to entry. So you're competing with high school kids, academically trained filmmakers, filmmakers who had professional movie making experience. You're competing with basically anyone with a camera. And even you could even do a cell phone video. So you're competing with virtually maybe everyone. So that's one of the big issues with filmmaking is you have such a high, high amount of competition for that job. And you have so many people saying, I'll do it for cheap, I'll do it for free, which generally, you know, a, a word of advice to people in this business is don't kind of market yourself as the cheapest or the, the best, um, you can say value, but like cheapest, lowest cost, that kind of stuff, because you can always go lower. So if that's your biggest selling feature, it's not gonna work because anyone else that it doesn't require any skill to lower your price. So, we're talking about price. And, you know, my experience was largely that the way you can make the most money was by doing weddings. Weddings generated the most money. So, weddings you can make up to $1,000 an event or even more, depending on if you did the reception, the ceremony, all that kind of stuff. So, but I, when, the thing with me was I was uncomfortable doing weddings. Weddings can be extremely emotional and you don't really know these people. So you're basically stepping right in during an extremely emotional event. And you're like, if they're doing a first dance and then you're on the dance floor holding a, like a, a camera, man, it, to me, it was just awkward. It was just uncomfortable. You don't know what to do, but you feel that you should always be close to the action. It's just, uh, it, it just makes me uncomfortable. So that's not for everyone, but that was the way you can make the most money by doing weddings. The problem is weddings are, you know, they're not every, they're generally only on Saturdays. They're during a specific season. So, and there's also a lot of competition for that as well, but you're, you're, you're notching that barrier up and as far as what kind of skill levels you need and equipment to do that because you just need more than just a camera and a tripod to do that, to do it right, in my opinion. So we talked about weddings. Now we're gonna talk about some other options. There's also commercials and like filming sports. That was another thing I saw a lot of. The problem is with filming sports, sports can take two and a half hours, three hours, commute time another hour, maybe half an hour to export the video. So the problem is, is unless you find like a high school coach willing to pay you like two or $3,000 a year to do videos, it's gonna be tough to make an hourly rate of more than like 10, $11 an hour doing that. Because again, if you're doing like a sport thing, unless you had some kind of follow device, you're, you have to man that camera at all times. It's, you can't just have a sporting event when you see a sporting event on TV, it's not like they just show a huge overhead shot where you can see the whole screen. Now it's zoomed into half of the field. This is anything from soccer, basketball, ice hockey. Okay, we're gonna resume. We talked about sports, we talked about weddings. Now let's talk about some other ways. So another way is obviously commercials. You can make video commercials for clients. The problem with that is you're unlikely gonna get someone to pay you hundreds of dollars uh, a day to just film like a 60 second commercial if it's just them and they have a small business and they want to do something like a um, you know they're whatever a plumber an electrician they're unlikely probably to say I'll, I'll spend a thousand dollars a day so you can get a security deposit with them you may be able to they'll probably rather just hire someone to do one or two hundred dollar video and then if they cancel the day before you get nothing out of it so I had one instance where I had, uh, I think six straight weeks, someone canceled on me the day before we were gonna film. And it was annoying and it was frustrating. And there's really nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can do is 
just try to have as many clients as possible. So overall, I think what you're getting, summing things up, the videography business, doing like freelance video stuff, I don't know what the experience is if like you're in like a video hub like, like Los Angeles, but just doing kind of things on your own with a camera, it can be, it's really, really tough to get consistent clients and to get consistent revenue. It's an extremely low barrier of entry field. So it's really tough to get clients. You're, you don't have a, a lot of power in the dynamic because again, they can just cancel on you the day before. So overall, I'd say it's not really a great way to make extra income. You're probably just in many cases better off getting a job as a, a retail cashier or a waiter just to make a couple extra dollars. So yeah, that's everything guys. Thanks for watching. And if you got a horror story about video production you want to list below, by all means do it. Thanks guys.